you are welcome to the next section. Link to the previous section will be up here and also in the description below. Now back in the code editor, we create another route to actually reset the password. This will be a push request as well. Now we we'll take a few properties from the body of the request. First, we will need the user ID, followed by the reset string and also the new password. Now the first thing we are going to do is to check if this reset string was actually generated by our system. So we check the password reset collection to see if this reset string record exists. Now inside here we get a result. Now since the result will be an array, we check if the length is greater than 0. Once the length of the result is greater than 0, it means that we found the record matching the user ID, else we return an error. Now at this point, we have our record existing, but we need to make another check. That is the expiry. We need to check if the record hasn't expired. Since we want our password reset records to expire in 60 minutes, we have to check if it is still valid. Otherwise, we don't allow the user to reset the password. So what we are doing here is to destructure the value from the result. Now if the expire set is less than the current time, it means that it is in the past and we can no longer use it. So what we are going to do is that we are going to delete the password reset record. So once we've deleted the record, we tell the user that the reset link has expired. This should be in the function. Now over here, it means that our password reset record hasn't expired. So now what we are going to do is that we are going to compare the provided reset string with the string that we stored in the database. So 
So for the comparison, we'll use Bcrypt again. So what we are comparing is the reset string and also the hashed reset string. For the reset string, we got it from the post request. But for the hashed reset string, we'll get it from the database. So let's fetch the hash reset string from the database. Now over here, we receive a boolean value matching the outcome of the comparison. So if the value is not true, we once again return an error message. Now if the result is true, then it means that the two strings we compared were a perfect match. So now what you are going to do is that we hash the new provided password and store it in the database. So once again, we provide the sort round for Bcrypt. Now the first argument will be the new password. Remember, you are supposed to receive this new password in the body of the request. The second argument will be the sort rounds. Now over here, we receive the newly hashed password. So what we are going to do is that we are going to look for the user record and update it with this password. So we are going to use the update1 function on the user model. Remember, I said that we created this whole login system in a previous video, so if anything sounds confusing. You can just go back and check the video for a clearer understanding. Now the first argument to update one will be the parameters that it should use to find the record. So now we are going to search for the ID and pass the user ID to it. The second argument will be the change that it should make. So we are telling it to change the password to the new hashed password. Having a quick look at the user, this is the password that is going to update. Once again, this will return a promise. Now over here, the update has been completed. Now what you are going to do is that 
since we are no longer going to use the password reset record, we are going to clear it out of the database. So we are going to make use of the password reset model. Now inside this block, we successfully updated the user record and also deleted the password reset record. So now at this point, we can actually return a status of success, meaning that we've completed the password reset process. Now we can try the second part in Postman again. So in the first part, we sent the password reset request and we received the email. So in the email, we are provided with the link. At this point, we need the parameters attached to the link to make the second request. So let's click on the link and fetch the parameters. So the first thing is the user ID. For the second, we are supposed to get a string as well, but we are getting a function. So let's go back to the code editor and see what the problem is. Oh, okay. So at the point where we are creating our reset string, the UUID version 4 here should be a function. Once we've done that, we can go ahead to request for the password reset again, and this time we should get a proper string. So inside Postman, we make the request again. Once again, we get the pending status. And we've received another email. Clicking on the link, we get the two strings that we want. So let's copy them. First, we copy the user ID. And back in Postman, we make another request. This is a post request. Now inside the code editor, we see that we need the user ID, reset string, and a new password for our request. Now the request URL will be similar to our previous request. But the endpoint will be reset password. The next argument will be the reset string. And we can get it in the link as well. Lastly, we send our new password. To know if this actually works, let's try and log in with our current password before we try to reset it. So we create another request here for sign in. For the body, we pass the email and password. Now let's try signing in. Now we see that it was successful and we got our data back. Now let's proceed with the reset. Now at this point we change the password. And we proceed with the request. Now we see that our password has been reset successfully. Now let's try the signing again and see if it works. 
now we see that invalid password has been entered. So now our password is no longer the old one, which means that it has been updated. So let's try logging in again with the new one. And now we see that it works. So now we've seen how to implement password reset in the back end of our login system using Node.js and MongoDB. If you learned something in this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment about the video in the comment section below. You can also support me with the link in the description. In the next episode, we'll see how to implement the front-end part of this login system using React.js. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Now over here, the update has been complete. Hey, has been complete. If you learned something in this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment section. Also leave a comment for me in the comment section below. You can.